Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, so that means we take a look back at Saturday's games. Um, funny how that works. Uh, for those of you who may not know, this is the old Binghamton Whalers logo. Uh, Binghamton Black Bears did a nice little uh, uh, Whalers throwback thing because uh, back in the early 80s, uh, the team in town was called the Binghamton Whalers. They were the top team for the Hartford Whalers. And, uh, yeah, how convenient. Uh, so, anyway, uh, it, it, that, that was a fun game to be at. Uh, Danbury did not have too much fun, though. Um, they, they looked a little flat last night. Um, it, Danbury's been playing very, very well over the last 20, 25 games. And uh, th this just, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't there last night. Uh, Binghamton took a full advantage, comes away with a 7-1 win. Uh, we had goals in the first by Don Oliveri, uh, Kyle Steffen, and, uh, oh yeah, Blake Tosto. Uh, so it was 3-0 right off the bat. And uh, the shots in the first period, 23-10. Uh, Danbury just didn't seem like they could get it going. Uh, they just seemed a little slow last night. Uh, I expect a much better effort from them today when they host Elmira. Um, I, I think I think they'll bounce back. Um, Dan Danbury is too good to. Yeah, I think this is just a one-off. Uh, so in the second period, uh, second uh, we had uh, Tyson Kirkby scoring on the power play for Binghamton. Uh, Stefan scores again, and then finally uh, late in the period at uh, eighteen forty-four. Uh, Colby Johnson ends up scoring, uh, and so that ended the shutout. Um, after two, it was 5-1. to one. In the third, Binghamton added a couple more, Kirkby and Bond on the power play. Kirkby's goal was shorthanded, and uh, that's the way it ended, 7-1. to one. Uh, Nolan Egbert, uh, almost a shutout last night. Um I almost had, well, he had two pucks get by him, but uh, one was a nice little save on the goal line by uh, by Austin Thompson. Uh, kept the puck from going in. Nice little celebratory hug at the end of the period, too, after that. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Egbert stops 31-32. Uh, both Stefan and Kirkby with two goals and assist. And uh, Taylor Joseph, 38-45. Um, that was a lot of rubber he faced last night. So Danbury goes to 30, 19, and 5. It looks like they're probably going to settle in that third place spot and be the road team when they take on the Motor City Rockers in the playoffs. With Motor City's magic number now to clinch the second spot is just two points. Uh, Binghamton improves to 36, 10, and 7. Obviously still first in the Empire. Um, been a surprise. Uh, Blue Ridge. Uh, they, uh, they, they beat Columbus first franchise win over Columbus. And, uh, yes, Columbus didn't have, um, uh, Justin McDonald in the lineup, nor Josh Pietrantonio, but I mean, you know, the rest of the roster is still stacked. And so Blue Ridge coming out with a three to two win on the road. That's really big. Um, and Blue Ridge didn't get many shots in this game, but the ones they had, they made count. Uh, in the first period, it was goals by Joel Furzee and Daniel Martin. Uh, Nathan Balkel also scored late in that period for Columbus. And in the second, Carson Andrioli, who of course played most of this year with Columbus. He ends up scoring on his former team. Uh, closing out the scoring at the 18-minute mark of the second period was Jordan Popoff. And third period was a stalemate. And, yeah, only 19 shots on goal for Blue Ridge, but three got by Brendan Colgan. Meanwhile, Owen Liskovitz playing second night in the back-to-back. -back. Um, he saves 27 of 29. And, uh, yeah, very well. Uh, Andrioli also had an assist on the night. So um, two-point night for Carson Andrioli in his return to Columbus. Well, of course, he played the day before as well, but still. Uh, Nathan Balkwell had a goal, and Stor Johan assisted on both goals. Colgan uh, saved 16 of 19. Uh, Blue Ridge now 15, 
32 and 7. They have 10 regulation wins. Every team in the Fed now has 10 regulation time wins. Um, we haven't seen that in a long, long time. Uh, Columbus is now 42, 7 and 3. They, they've got home ice advantage locked up. Uh, crowd of 37, 24. I don't think Columbus is going to make the 100,000 fan fresh threshold. They would have to draw 5,900 in their last game. I mean, it can happen, but uh, uh, I, I was hoping that they would hit 100,000. Uh, they're they're going to be close. So there you go with that game. Uh, Carolina started off behind Mississippi and stormed back for the win. And uh, it's a 6-2 to two victory for the Thunderbirds. Uh Matt Stoya, he was the story for the Seawolves. He scores both goals in the first period. The first at 14-19. That was answered by Gus Ford, 15-42. Uh, and then Stoya scores again. Uh, there was a delayed penalty, so there was an extra attacker on. And the Stoya uh, put it home uh, at the 1952 mark. So Mississippi ended up with a... One nothing lead after one. They were out shooting Carolina sixteen to ten at that point, um, and it just didn't come uh, come together the rest of the way because Carolina just took over. Uh, we had a power play goal by Dawson Baker at the fourteen mark. We had uh, Joe Kennedy getting on the board, and then uh, a minute and a half after that, Roman Kramer. Scores so three goals unanswered in the third uh, in the second period for Carolina, and then in the third they added a couple more just for good measure. Both goals scored by John Batita, um, about three minutes apart from each other, and yeah, a nice little three to two win by the Thunderbirds. Um, twenty nine shots for each at the end Carolina improving to 39 11 and three of course they are the number two seed in the Car in the continental division Mississippi 21 28 and three I'm concerned about Mississippi um they have now lost 17 of their last 21 games um that is not the way you want to end the year um they they need to figure something out quick um the the talent is there the the players are there. Uh, it's it's just not happening right now. So uh, anyway, uh, with this game, uh, Batita with the two goals, and Nate Keeley had three assists on the night. Uh, Karpinski uh, started in goal, 27 saves and 29 shots. And uh, for the uh, Seawolves, uh, Jackson Bond assisted on both of Stoya's goals. Uh, Shepard stopping 23 pucks, uh, six got by him. So there we go. Uh, good crowd, 28-72 on hand in Biloxi last night. Um, now Mississippi was shorthanded. They were down. Uh, they were down a skater, um, but uh, nonetheless, it's 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 tough sailing right now in uh, Mississippi. All right, uh, a game that could have clinched a playoff spot. Well, no, things go on uh, another day at least. As Elmira falls to the Watertown Wolves four to three, um, this game was much more gentlemanly compared to uh, Friday night's melee. Um, so through this game, uh, the teams exchanged goals. Watertown always scoring first. Uh, he had Carter Thornton scoring short-handed at twelve fifty-three of the first, uh, countered by Cam Yarwood on the power play at fourteen twenty-three. Um, so it's 1-1 one, one after 1. Uh, shots were 17-7 in favor of Watertown in that first period. In the, sem uh, in the second period, Michael Mercurio puts the Wolves up. Only have things tied up again by Dustin Gesso. So 2-2 two, two at the end of 2. At this point, shots were 34-19 in favor of Watertown. Third period, Carter Thornton. On the board once again at 2.05, exactly one minute later, Trevor Newman scores, and it's 3-3. And uh, Elmira's keeping their fingers crossed. You know, they're thinking, you know, we can do this. But uh, eventually on the power play, Jacob Black scores at 13.43, and that would be the final goal. Uh, 
final score four to three. Um, Sammy Bernard. Um, yeah, it, it's always tough when you see a goalie have this many saves and come out with a loss. Forty eight stops by by Simba. Uh, great night for him. Uh, El uh, Bouchard, twenty two saves and twenty five shots. Uh, Carter Thornton with the two goals. Uh, Jacob Black had the goal and the assist. Um, so the magic number remains six for Elmira. Um, things could get clinched today. Elmira plays in Danbury and Watertown hosts Binghamton. If Binghamton wins and if Elmira wins, there you go. Done deal. And Elmira would clinch that final playoff spot. But uh, for now, uh, the race is still open. Uh, Three-point difference between the two clubs. All right, final game of the night, Port Huron. Uh, they were in Baton Rouge. I thought this was going to end up in a split, but Port Huron had bigger ideas. And uh, Oscar Wallstrom, uh, Walgren, excuse me, Oscar Walgren, um, he just got signed a couple weeks ago. Uh, to the Port Huron Prowlers, and what a find he is! Um, he's he he seems to be a keeper. No, I did not mean that as a pun. Uh, meinwhile, uh, Sherlock's worst enemy, John Moriarty, was in goal for Baton Rouge. Uh, it was all Port Huron early. Tristan Sims scoring in the first at nine eleven at seventeen nineteen. It's the first pro goal by Brett Lockhart. Congratulations to Brett. Uh, shots were 14 to 12 in favor of Baton Rouge in the first, uh, but Port Huron was up where it mattered most, up on the big board. Uh, Decumbus scores just a minute 23 into the second period, and suddenly it's a 3 nothing game, uh, but Baton Rouge managed to climb back thanks to Noah Robinson. Two power play goals, one at 6.26, one eight thirty three, so now it's three to two, and the game's getting interesting. Um, just looking at things overall, it, it, Baton Rouge has been playing a decent game the last couple of weeks. Of course, they had three wins, you know, last, uh, last weekend, and then um, you know they they still played Port Huron tough this weekend. Uh, in the end, though, Jake Vaughn, he ends up scoring. Uh, congratulations, Jake, uh, for the Prowlers. That's at 11-13, and the final is a 4-2 score. Uh, shots are pretty close in this game. Uh, Baton Rouge ended up with 35 shots as opposed to 34 for Port Huron. Port Huron now 28-20-6. and six. Baton Rouge... Uh, 13, 36, and 4. Unfortunately, they lose some ground to uh, to Blue Ridge. They were hoping to overcome Blue Ridge and get out of the basement. Uh, now the edge is five points in favor of the Bobcats as far as holding on to spot number five, um, which, of course, not in the playoffs, but you're playing for pride. So uh, Blue Ridge uh, trying to stay up on the, uh, the Zydeco. Um, I forgot to mention records for uh, Elmira and Watertown. Uh, Elmira is now 20, 32, and 2. Meanwhile, Watertown is 18, 30, and 5. Now, both of these teams had a lot of suspensions uh, lodged against them, or placed against them with, by the league from Friday night. Um, Frankie McClendon and Coach Tyler Jurich had just one game each, as did Tate Leeson for Watertown. So they didn't play last night. They weren't in the game last night, but they are available to play today. Um, so that goes a long way. So Elmira was one player short in the game, and Watertown was down two because they have two players on multiple game suspensions uh, whose ears are now probably done unless they make the playoffs. That being Josh Tomasi and Dakota Seaman. Dakota Seaman it was an 11 game suspension as a repeat offender. So, all right, so that is last night's action. We've got three games on tap for today. Maybe a final playoff spot clinched. 
We will see. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. And thank you so much for watching.